The goddess Atebe had existed forever in a deep slumber, but one day she awoke and wanted to care for something. So, out of nothing, she created two suns and the earth. One of these suns was imaginative and created animals, plants, light, and man, while the other sun made the winds rage and the earth tremble in earthquakes and hurricanes out of a jealous anger for what his brother had created. The original inhabitants of Jamaica are known as the Redware people. Not much is known about them, or how they disappeared, but it is commonly accepted that they bred themselves out of existence with the new people who migrated onto the island. These migrants were a subgroup of the Arawak people, known as the Siboni, who called the island that they inhabited Jamaica, meaning the land of wood and water. These people had no organized political structure, until it was introduced to them by the classic Taino people of Hispaniola. The Siboni had declared war on the Caribs, another tribe in the Caribbean, but there were no gains or losses because soon the Europeans would arrive. There were legends of an island with plenty of gold named Jamaica that reached the ears of Christopher Columbus on his second voyage to the Americas. So, he traveled there in hopes of bringing back riches to the Spanish crown. Once he arrived, Columbus attempted to land at Discovery Bay, but was met with hostility and repelled by the natives. He tried once again later to land, this time prepared for a fight, and his men were able to fend off the Siboni. Once he landed, Columbus searched for the fabled gold, but to his dismay, found none, and left soon after. Several years later, on his fourth voyage, Columbus encountered a storm that badly damaged his ships. So, in an act of desperation, he landed on the Jamaican island. Him and his crew were stranded on the island for an entire year repairing their ships before they could leave. Soon after, the Spanish king sent an expedition led by Juan de Esquivel to capture the island. Juan founded Sevilla Nueva, the first European settlement on Jamaica, and claimed the territory for the Spanish crown. In the following period of time, Spanish settlers flowed onto the island and created settlements and plantations, which demanded slave labor. Most of the native people would be taken into slavery and treated horribly. And due to their living conditions as slaves and their lack of immunity to European diseases, 90% of the Siboni population would die and this gap in slave labor would be filled with Africans brought across the Atlantic. Now, the English wanted more territories in the Caribbean and South America, and they despised the Spanish for owning so much colonial land, so they frequently conducted raids on Jamaica and the surrounding Spanish territories, and Jamaica was also very prone to plundering by pirates. Due to the size of the island, Jamaica had very small resource capability, and so became a port and military base for ships going to the mainland Americas. Now, the French and English declared war on Spain, and the Brits snuck up on the Jamaican island through Cagway Bay. The Spanish were not expecting this attack, so their fortifications were very ill-defended, and conquering the island was an easy task. And in the peace treaty, England gained control of the island of Jamaica. The issue now was that officially the English owned the island, but there were still many Spanish settlers loyal to the Spanish crown who fled from the coast to the interior of the island and conducted guerrilla warfare on English troops. At the same time, many slaves freed themselves from their captors and allied with Siboni people to create small independent communities of free people known as the Maroons. At the time, it was commonly known that the English owning Jamaica was the knife pointed at the heart of the Spanish Empire. So, several times the Spanish tried to retake the island, but were never successful. The English began building many sugar plantations, which exponentially increased the population and wealth of the island. But, Maroons who controlled expanses of land in the interior of the island frequently raided these plantations for resources and to free slaves. Due to the frequency of these raids, there was an influx of English troops sent to the island, which sparked the First Maroon War. The Maroons, knowing that they were outclassed, resorted to guerrilla warfare to inflict heavy losses on the colonial troops. Eventually, the English came to terms that they could not defeat the Maroons due to their mobility and knowledge of the land, so they gave in and acknowledged their independence. Later, a slave revolt occurred where hundreds of slaves took control of four plantations and raided a town for munitions. Most of them surrendered once they saw a militia coming to suppress them, but there was a short fight with those who remained. In the end, all of those who resisted, and even most of those who surrendered, were tried and hung. Very soon after, two Maroons were flogged for supposedly stealing a pig, and when Maroon leaders came to confront English officials, they were taken into custody, which sparked the Second Maroon War. This conflict went very much in the same way as the first, with guerrilla tactics being used to the advantage of the Maroons. But, this time, the Brits employed a scorched earth policy, which made it nearly impossible for the Maroons to get munitions and food. So, eventually, they gave in, and most of them were deported to Nova Scotia, Canada. During the American Revolution, the French, alongside the Spanish, planned a naval invasion of Jamaica to cripple the Royal Navy for the Americans and to capture the valuable sugar-producing island. The English, hearing of this plan, preemptively struck at the fleet, defeating it. 
Now, the British Parliament abolished the slave trade and made several improvements to slave life, such as the banned use of whips, freedom to practice religion, and one day a week required for slaves not to work. The Jamaican government resisted this, telling the English that the slaves were content with their lives as they were. The resistance to this legislation led to a revolt of around 60,000 slaves who demanded improved conditions. This would be the largest slave revolt in the West Indies, but still easily suppressed. Many slaves feared death if captured after the revolt was finished, so many of them fled to cockpit country. The number of executions from this revolt were so great that word reached the British Parliament and sped up the process of the emancipation of slaves. The new status given to slaves once freed greatly crippled the Jamaican economy, since it heavily relied on sugar plantations. And on top of this, there was a drought and disease outbreak. These factors worsened the living conditions of the already impoverished African communities, which led to an undercurrent of anger and resentment. These emotions exploded into a protest when a black man was seen to have been given an unfair sentence. In response to these protests, the Jamaican governor gave free reign to the military to kill and arrest any black citizen in front of them, even those not involved in the protest. Due to his actions in response to these protests, Edward Eyre, the governor of Jamaica, was deported to England, but never imprisoned. Also because of these protests, England was afraid that Jamaica was becoming too independent, so they demoted them to a crown colony. They had little say in local governmental affairs, and they were appointed a governor by the English. Over the next few years, the Jamaican sugar industry began to lose steam against larger competitors, but the void left was perfectly filled with the banana industry, which flourished as Jamaica's main export. Kingston became the new economic hub of the colony, so the capital was moved there, but soon after there was an earthquake and a subsequent fire which destroyed the city. Once World War I started, there was a draft for the British West Indies Regiment, which Jamaicans made a small portion of. This regiment would go on to fight in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. Then, when the war was over, some Jamaicans felt that they wanted an independent culture from their rulers, so they began a new religion called Rastafarianism, of which Jamaica is stereotypically associated with. The Great Depression was another spark in the cry for Jamaican self-determination, as it was seen that the suffering could have been avoided if they were independent. And due to the continued economic struggle, Jamaicans did not participate in the early years of World War II. But this all changed when the English gave them more self-governance and drafted the Caribbean Regiment, which fought in the Mediterranean and the Middle East. Once the distraction of war was over, the Jamaican population shifted their attention to independence, which they gained through slow diplomatic change, known as constitutional decolonialism, which took them just under two decades. The island was fully democratic, but a recession led to a rise in gang violence in support of various political parties. Edward Sega was the leader of the Jamaican Conservative Party when he was elected Prime Minister. And as a stark anti-communist, he aided the Americans in their invasion of communist Granada by sending them troops. Over the next while, Jamaicans began to focus on taking down corruption and poverty, all the while the drug trafficking industry took hold of the island. The government avidly opposed this, which eventually led to the Tivoli incursion, where gang members had a shootout with police that left 100 civilians, gang members, and police dead and around 500 arrested. After this, battle and sub after this battle and subsequent arrest of the gang leader, the Jamaican murder rate dropped by nearly half, but the country still stays within the top 10 highest murder rates for a country. In the next election, the forefront topic for Jamaicans was homosexuality, as Jamaica had been the first country to constitutionally criminalize same-sex marriage, and although promises were made to legalize it, there have been no actions taken. The battle continues to this day, as many incidences are brought before the government of violent attacks against LGBTQ members.